This video tutorial is from the Lightroom Image Processing Mastery Workshop, which is part of the SR Lounge Lightroom Workshop Collection. This workshop on DVD teaches everything from basic post-production techniques all the way through to advanced stylized post-production, Lightroom retouch, detail enhancing, and more. The workshop includes over 70 high-definition videos, totaling over 10 hours of uninterrupted education. Also included are the 50 raw image exercise files that we're going to be working through. Designed for Lightroom 4 and Lightroom 5 users, you can learn more or purchase this workshop from the SR Lounge store by clicking the link below in the description. Let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this first video, we're gonna be going through our basic panel adjustments and we'll be working through this exercise file right here. Let's take a look. This is exercise file number 25. I'm gonna hit I to bring up my information. I'm also gonna hit F5 just to shrink up my identity plate, give us a little bit more working space. Now, as always, I like to go through my information just to see how the image was shot. It gives me a little bit of ideas as far as what I need to look out for when producing. We're gonna focus here on the basic panel adjustments, but this is a good habit that I want everybody to kind of get into. Now, this image was shot on a 5D Mark III. It was shot at 1 400th of a second at f2.8, ISO 500. Not necessarily the best ISO setting, but whatever. And it was shot at uh, 70 millimeters on a 24 to 70 f2.8 L lens. All right, so let's hit I to turn that off. Oh, we have uh, one more set of information. It was a 10.5 megapixel file. All right, now in our basic panel, we have quite a few adjustments. So let's go through each of these as we work through the image, starting from the top with treatment. Now with treatment, we can either keep it in color, which is default, or we can switch it to black and white. And you know what? The easiest way to go from color and black and white is just to use the shortcut, which we can just hit V. So hitting V is gonna switch it to black and white, and we can either make our adjustments over a color image or over a black and white, whatever we really prefer. We're gonna leave this image in color for right now, and let's just go over our different settings. So this first little sub panel, you'll basically notice that each panel is kind of divided into several different sections or sub panels. So here we have treatment color, black and white up in this first sub panel. Then we have basically all of our white balance adjustments here. And then we have basic kind of exposure and, uh, and tone adjustments. And then we have presence adjustments below. So in our white balance, we have a couple different ways of adjusting. Once again, Adobe gives us several different tools to do the exact same thing. To adjust white balance, we can use one of the white balance presets by dropping or clicking on this little drop down menu. And we can choose from these different kind of dialed in presets from daylight to, uh, to cloudy to so forth. So this would probably be more of a cloudy image. And you can see that it gets the white balance actually fairly close to what it is. The only thing with using these presets is you really need to know what kind of lighting the image was shot under and sometimes they're not going to be that accurate. For example, if you're shooting in tungsten light indoors, well, tungsten could be several different types of temperatures. You could have tungsten at 2850 temperature, which is where this is at, or you could have it at 3600. So the presets are nice to get somewhere kind of close to where you want to be, but really we need to make other fine tuning adjustments to get our temperature exactly right. And what I like to do is often I'll use the white balance selector tool and we can access this by clicking on the tool itself or just by hitting W. We can use this to basically target any neutral color. Now most people are confused by the way that this tool works. This tool does not work by basically selecting white. And you'll notice that oftentimes people will grab this and they'll select, uh, say, a dress, but a dress oftentimes isn't white. A lot of times a, a dress kind of has some warm tones in it, some peachy tones, and so forth. What we want to choose is just a neutral color. It could be anything neutral, from white all the way to black, so long as it's not blown out, which means it's basically too bright, so long as it's not clipped, which means it's too dark, and basically it falls anywhere in between and doesn't have any color. It's basically a neutral tone. Now what this does is it does a great job of getting you very close to where you need to be. So if I drop this on the dress, so long as the dress is actually white, it gets us really close to where we want our white balance. Once we've used our white balance selector tool, that's when we basically make our additional white balance adjustments by just kind of fine tuning. And here's what I really recommend is before you start fine tuning your temperature, get the exposure at least correct or, or close to correct. So at this point, what I would do is drop down to my exposure. I'm going to bring my exposure up because we're significantly underexposing this image. And I'm going to bring up to say 1.32 around this range. We're adding basically 1.3 to 1.5 stops of light. And this is looking close to basically the correct exposure. This is when I would go and make my fine tuning adjustments to temperature and tint 
Why? Because temperature and tint, they're going to look different based on different exposures. Okay, so we want to make sure that we dial in a correct exposure before we try and make fine tuning adjustments. Otherwise, we're going to be doing a lot of rework. So at this point, I would basically fine tune and say, you know, it really doesn't matter on this image. We can go with several different kinds of looks. If you want to go with a warm look, we'd probably take it up to say 7100 to 7500. Uh, Kelvin. If we want to give it more of a cool and neutral vibe, we'd probably drop it down to say, well, probably around like 5,000. This gives it that very cool kind of tone that is also popular among different photographers. This is going to go based on your style. Now, my style is really kind of somewhere in between. I would probably go around 61 to 6200 and kind of leave it at this nice neutral overall tone. We can also adjust our tint to control the level of basically magenta versus green mix. Now, going down to tint, we can basically take tint up which is going to make images more magenta or more pink or we could bring it down which is going to make them more green now one thing I'm doing here to make these adjustments is I'm actually mousing over and rather than clicking and dragging I can click up and down on my keyboard so hitting up is going to go by small increments hitting shift and then up is going to go by large increments so basically it'll be I think times four so going up goes by like five on tent in tint hitting shift up goes by 20 so we're going by basically four times the increment when we hit shift now tint is generally going to vary by camera make and model so for example if you're a Nikon shooter typically your images are going to come out a little bit more on the green side and you'll probably be taking tint up to add a little bit of those pinks back into your image if you're on the Canon side, you might be subtracting because Canon images tend to come out a little bit more pink with a little more magenta, and it has generally a little more fair skin tones. And so oftentimes we're actually adjusting backwards. So we're taking Canon images a little more to the green side. Uh, oftentimes we're taking Nikon images a little more to the pink side. Really, this is going to vary based on your camera make and your overall preference on what you like your images to look like. For us, for this image, I'm going to take the tint basically up to about plus 12, and that is looking pretty solid. Now, let's go back down to our exposure and our basic adjustments down here and our tone adjustments. We have the option for auto toning here, and this is something I generally do not use. Auto toning was basically going to automatically tone the image, and sometimes it works great, and most of the time it does not. Okay, so for this image, it actually worked okay, but really we want to have overall control over this tone value, and we don't want to leave it up to Lightroom to do it because it's really going to vary from image to image and it's never going to be consistent and uh, or accurate so i would dial it in manually now what we're going to do from here is let's adjust the exposure up a bit more so we get a little more uh, correct exposure now from exposure let's go down to highlights shadows whites and blacks and you'll notice that i actually skipped over contrast because we're going to come back to that because generally what i like to do is to adjust my exposure first then adjust my tone settings and then go back to contrast afterwards to kind of get my final adjustment now with highlights shadows whites and blacks essentially what we have here in slider form is a tone curve so what Lightroom is essentially allowing us to do is adjust our highlights up or down, adjust our shadows up or down, whites up and down, and blacks up and down. So if I take my highlights to the left, you'll notice that's going to basically pulling down the brights in the image. It's going to be pulling down the highlights. If I take the shadows to the left, it's going to make shadows even darker. Whereas if I go to the right, it's going to brighten up my shadows. Likewise with whites, if I take it to the left, it dims down or it basically darkens our whites. If I take it to the right, it's going to brighten the whites. If I take black to the left it's going to darken up our black tones and if I take to the right it's going to brighten these tones so how do we know exactly what area of the image these are affecting well we can see what area it's going to be adjusting by just mousing over and looking in the histogram so if we mouse over any of these adjustments you'll notice in the histogram that it'll actually highlight the portion of the image that is being adjusted so with exposure we're really adjusting overall the mid-tone of the image we're kind of controlling everything but it has more of this mid-tone bias as you can see as it's highlighted up in the histogram. When we go down to the highlights, we're now controlling the upper register of our histogram. So if I drag left and right, you can see how it's controlling kind of that peak area and moving it basically brighter or darker. Going down to whites, it's now controlling basically the upper or the highest register, our specular highlights. These are essentially the pure whites in the image. And so if we go right or left, it's bringing back or it's adding these pure whites. If we go to the left, it's pulling them down so they kind of get a little bit more dim. Likewise, with shadows, we're controlling basically the lower register or essentially our mid-tone shadows and with blacks we're controlling the leftmost side of the histogram those deep blacks and shadows
So between these five settings, between exposure, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks, we have a lot of control over our tone values inside of Lightroom 4 and Lightroom 5. And the great thing about it is that these can stack with a tone curve. And we're gonna show you how powerful that is later on. Just know that these are independent. So we can control tone up here, and we can also do the same thing in our tone curve, which is gonna make it even more powerful. So let's say for this image, maybe I wanna add back a little bit of highlights just to give us a little more contrast. So basically to get contrast, we're going to brighten our whites and then we're going to darken our blacks and that's what gives us overall contrast. So rather than adjusting the contrast slider, which is going to really adjust everything uh, kind of incrementally, it's going to make global adjustments to contrast. We can control contrast down to essentially our highlights and our shadows and our whites and blacks just by using these sliders. So I'm going to bring up my whites a little bit. Let's get a little more of these pure whites in there. I'm going to bring down the shadows a bit uh, and the black. So let's go with shadows down to around say negative 10 blacks down to maybe a little bit deeper to say negative 25 and now if you look at our histogram we have this beautiful histogram where we have a little bit of really bright highlights we have a tiny bit of really dark shadows and we were able to adjust our overall contrast with a very kind of fine-tuned and controlled hand so at this point if we want to we can add a little bit of extra contrast now that we have our tones in and what I'll do is I'll take this maybe up to about plus 10 and now we're done with kind of those basic tone adjustments when we finish these basic tone adjustments this would be the point that we can revisit our temperature if we want to kind of get any fine-tuning adjustments there so if I want to tweak it I might take it up a little bit to 6500 Kelvin just to get it a slight bit more warm and that's it all right, so now let's move down to our present sliders where we have clarity, vibrance, and saturation. Starting from the top with clarity, what clarity is gonna do is boost mid-tone contrast. Now essentially the effect that this has is either gonna soften an image, so if we pull it to the left, you're gonna see that it's softening up our image. If we pull to the right, it's gonna basically harden the image or kinda of create this sort of overall grungy look to the image. And you'll see this look quite a bit where you have this kinda of high level of mid-tone contrast or this high-pass look in oftentimes street portraiture. But for say weddings or for images that you wanted to have a more soft look, we're generally not going to be raising clarity, except for maybe just a tiny bit to increase a little bit of that mid-tone detail. Generally, we also want to avoid dropping clarity, say below negative 20, because it's going to really soften an image too much. It's going to create kind of this mushy overall tone with that mid-tone, and it really doesn't look good. So dropping down to negative 40, negative 60 is in general not going to be a good idea. Now a little tip, to reset any slider, you can just double click on the arrow and it's automatically gonna go back to the default setting. So for clarity, it goes back to zero. For this particular image, we can really do a whole number of things. I could leave it at zero, I could take it down to negative 10 if I want a slightly softer look, but since the image is so wide, it's shot basically so far back, I'm gonna increase my clarity just a bit to about plus 10, just to boost my overall mid-tone contrast a little bit and enhance that mid-tone detail. Now next we have vibrance and saturation and these kind of work in tandem but they work in slightly different ways. The easiest way to explain vibrance is to say that it essentially affects the colors that are less saturated more than the colors that are more saturated. So as you adjust vibrance up and colors become more saturated, it's targeting essentially the tones that are still less saturated. In effect, essentially what this does is it allows us to control those more subtle tones and basically add more full saturation to them. And as those tones become more and more saturated, vibrance has less and less control over them. This also basically helps us to preserve skin tones. If you want to basically add saturation to an image while preserving skin tones, vibrance is the place to go. If we want to make very subtle changes to overall toning, to basically overall saturation, we can also basically pull out some of the vibrance and, and kind of reduce and create a very subtle desaturated look to our image. On the other hand, moving down to saturation, saturation is going to basically adjust all of the colors evenly. So it's going to either make all the colors more saturated or all the colors less saturated but it does it without any bias so just remember that to preserve skin tones we're generally using vibrance and to make overall saturation adjustments we're basically just adjusting the saturation now for this image what I generally like to do is if I'm trying to get more saturation more color in the image is I like to adjust my saturation up first that way I can see basically what point do my skin tones kind of start to get funky and right around basically beyond plus 10 plus 15 I feel like the skin tones are becoming a little bit too 
uh, colored. So what I'll do is I'll bring it up to about 10 and then from there I'll raise my vibrance maybe to around 10 or 15 once again until I get a little bit of additional saturation there without affecting my overall skin tones. That way we have nice overall skin tones and if we zoom in we can see this image is really pulled back quite a bit anyway so I'm not too worried on this particular image just because it's so wide. But if it were close up we'd want to look out for those kind of dark pinks, those dark reds, oranges that might appear over skin. At this point we're done with the basic adjustments with this image. Now you should understand by now the basics of each of these sliders but don't worry you don't need to master everything at this point. We're going to be working through tons and tons of images so you'll develop that mastery as we go. Just kind of understand the basics of each of these sliders and we'll reinforce that from image to image. Let's check out what this image looked like before by hitting the backslash key. So hitting backslash we can see the before image and with our basic panel modifications we've made dramatic changes to the way that this image looks. Great job everybody and before we conclude this video the last thing we're going to do with every one of the exercises that we work through is we're going to create a final snapshot with our develop settings and basically all a snapshot is is it's just a record of the develop settings that are applied to an image at any particular point. So to create one we just go over here to snapshots we're going to hit plus and then I'm just going to give it a name. So I'm going to call this 01 because these are the first adjustments that we made to this image and I'm going to say basic panel adjustments only. Just to give it a little description. Now if we come back to this image at a later point in this DVD then basically what it allows us to do is we can create different snapshots with different save states and so we can compare different versions to one another. That's it for this video and I'll see you all in the next one.